Hi, Farmer John here, and welcome back to my home laboratory of hard way learned physics lessons. Today we're looking at a brushed DC motor that I built about a year ago, and if you're curious as to how this works, well, I could make a video about that in the future, but today the focus is on what went wrong with it. So let me hook it up to my power supply here, and I'll show you, show you how it runs. Seems pretty, pretty good, right? Nothing wrong with that. Well, let me just turn up the voltage. Now that vibration that you could hear, that wasn't happening when I first started the motor. In fact, it was running so smooth at first that I thought it would always stay that smooth. I, I didn't think that the like I didn't think that the little imperfection that it had would ever cause any problems. But if I run it at low speed here, I don't know if you can see it on the camera, but the shaft is actually bent. Let me rest my rest my hand here. Now, obviously, with all the effort that I put into making sure everything was as balanced as it could be, of course I didn't build it with a bent shaft. What happened? What, how, why is the shaft bent now? I didn't hit it with my hand. Nothing like that happened. Well, at first I wasn't sure, and the way it happened was kind of weird, but then I started thinking about centrifugal force, and it all made sense. So, allow me to explain. And here's the motor looking at it towards the shaft, which I have exaggerated for the sake of illustration. So you already know that when you're in a car, this is a car, and you are in it. And if this car is taking a turn to the left at a high speed, then you already know that you'll be feeling a force pulling you to the right. This is called centrifugal force because naturally all the mass within this car, including you, wants to continue going forward. That's just what it naturally wants to do. But it can't do that because the friction of the tires is forcing it to turn left. So, therefore, you feel like you're being pulled to the right. Well, the same thing happens to all the heaviest parts. Well, really, every part of this thing. Every part of it, as it's spinning, it constantly wants to go straight. So, there's going to be an outward force pulling on all these called centrifugal force. Most of you already know that. Cool. Now this black dot in the middle represents the center of mass. So if we average up all of the weight all around this structure, ideally it would come out to a, a place right in the center is where you could consider the average of all that mass uh, disregarding gravity because gravity doesn't matter when you're spinning at thousands of RPM. And it did spin at thousands of RPM before. I don't know what it is now, but it spun much faster before this vibration started. Now, of course, I'm not a factory, so even though it was fairly well balanced, it was not at all perfectly balanced. So let's say that instead of here, let's say that our actual center of mass is right here. That means that the path that the center of mass is traveling is going in a circle. And of course, that means that the amount of centrifugal force on this side becomes a little bit greater. And I, I mean, I, I can't really draw this arrow getting smaller but just just imagine that every time this arrow gets bigger this arrow gets smaller so that puts a force on the shaft now at first that's no big deal especially at, at low speeds this is still a factor but it's just so small it doesn't matter but uh, then as I start to as I start to spin it up faster and faster it puts more and more force on here and of course that starts to bend it out a little bit more makes a wider path and at the same speed if your center of mass is going around a, if basically if mass is going around a, a larger diameter at the same speed there's going to be a larger centrifugal force so now that it's going even faster 
there's an even bigger difference. And it reaches a point where this difference becomes enough to actually bend the shaft. Let's say it bends right out here. Now we got a huge path. So of course at the same speed with this much larger diameter, now this arrow becomes massive. Of course there are limits to practically everything in physics so this can only propagate itself so far before something reaches a limit. In this case it starts to slow down because the motor can't put out enough torque to deal with the in, with the asymmetric loads which is the slightly more complicated physics that I'm not going to get into in this video. And this is the real reason why balancing matters so much. It's not just about comfort or efficiency, I mean of course those are factors, but Let's say, for example, a turbocharger, something that spins at 50, even up to 100,000 RPM. This thing maybe turns at what, like, maybe it was turning at two to 3,000 RPM at, at the best I ever had it. If something's spinning that fast and it goes off balance, it's violent. I mean, this, this right here, this is what, uh, this is what'll rip apart a jet engine when one blade comes off, you know? <laughs> so, uh... So what I'm thinking, since this motor does work, is maybe I should do something crazy like run it on 60 volts. Well, this thing only goes up to 30 volts, and uh, maybe it'll maybe it'll rip itself apart at 60 volts. Maybe it'll let the smoke out and catch on fire. I don't know what'll happen, but I can definitely make that happen, and I think I'm going to start working on that. Let me know if you want to see that, or if there's anything else involving this uh, that you'd like to see. Let me know. Any questions, suggestions, I'd appreciate it all. Uh, like and subscribe if you enjoyed this. Thank you so much for watching. Have a good day.